how to uh, move on to the next presentation, which uh, who is also from the Montpellier Hospital, CHU. So this is our genetician, Valentin Ruel. Welcome. There is a microphone here. Thank you very much, Helen, for helping out. Now, you sent out a questionnaire asking patients for their feedback. Tell us about that. Well, it wasn't exactly me, uh, but I have flyers and posters here available. So please, please take one if you want to. But thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you very much for uh, letting me take the floor. There, 10 minutes of David Genevieve. Imagine what it's like for two hours at the university. Okay, now I'm going to talk about Genida, and some of you have already used it, so you might be familiar with it. The title is in English because that's what the program was uh, made in, but it's about caregivers and parents and their contribution to Genida, how that complements medical data that we as physicians already have. So in the U.S., the average time that a doctor listens to their patient is 11 seconds. That's not bad, but it's not great. In France, of course, we do everything better. It's 23 seconds. And, of course, if you want to know what's going on, that's not very long. So, why is Genida here? Well, we wanted to do a descriptive study of the most frequent symptoms. So, when you have a pathology or a condition, that's the most common symptom. Why? Well, just to be able to answer your questions and to answer the family's questions who are impacted by DDX3X. Now, what we most commonly hear uh, every day is, yes, doctor, okay, you've diagnosed this in my child, but what does it mean? What's actually going to happen? What's the next step? And without you, the answer would be, I don't know. So we're trying to give a better answer, actually. Janida is about representativity. Now, it's a French platform, so of course, we have a lot of recruits that come from France, but as you can see, the spending, uh, sorry, it's less than 50%, so uh, over half of the uh, respondents are not French, and that's good for something that is made in France. So we're mainly European, as you can see. I'm not sure you can see that the black is the UK, then there's Spain, and then uh, fewer and smaller categories. So overall, once you have responded to this questionnaire, and for those who haven't, it's a questionnaire that's very long, but it's very detailed with a lot of questions that are broad to begin with, uh, but that then uh, ask general questions. What are the symptoms? Who is affected by this? And then you go through each organ and describe the impact, the, day, uh, the date it started, the age it started, etc. And what I have been able to see and analyze, thanks to this platform, is graphical representations such as this. So the overall outlook that shows us uh, the syndrome, the pathology. Vision seems to be impaired the most. Then we've got intellectual deficiency. We've got movement problems, uh, very broad uh, movement problems, uh, behavior, etc. And right down to the bottom, uh, and there are problems with cancer, just for 1%, and problems with smell, we have a zero response. Now, these questions that may seem very basic to you, no doctor had ever asked previously. So the first question is the most important one. What is the main problem at home? What affects your relatives' everyday life? That's something that is never asked. And you as parents ask this all the time. And we never know how to answer that. So we know that for DD x3x overall it's uh, attention deficit with or without uh, hyperactivity uh, and that is the uh, most difficult thing to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis the second most commonly asked question is what is the behavioral problem that impacts your everyday life the most well that means uh, you know cutting yourself off from outside uh, the outside world uh, that idea that you're just uh, not able to connect with the outside world. And that ties in with the psychiatrical side of things. And we'll be talking about that later. But another thing that might seem very obvious to you, but is very useful, 
how are things on a day-to-day -day basis? Does your child know how to do up their laces? Can they brush their teeth? No other genetic uh, condition is described in this way. So all of this, you know, for instance, do children at the age of six know how to do up their laces? Uh, but actually, it's about knowing uh, what they can and can't do. We need that kind of information. Without that, we can't provide responses. So on an individual level, it's very difficult to answer that. Uh, can your child tie their laces at six? Will they be able to tie their laces at six? But we have an overall idea. For instance, I have so many kids. This is what they know how to do at this age. This is what they don't know how to do. And it gives us an idea uh, of how to predict things in adults as well. Uh, has this happened? Has it never happened? Things that seem very obvious to you are very concrete and useful to us and questions that we very rarely ask or have asked. Uh, so complementarity, again, uh, we have the information from doctors, the information from Janida. Overall, Janida said basically the same things. That's logical. The doctors know at what age your child started to walk because you told the doctor. And then you told the same thing to Janida, or at least I hope you did. And then uh, that can be very useful as well. And what's really interesting with Janida is that there are uh, more graphical uh, representations, as you can see. More questions are raised, uh, and we wonder about uh, cross-referencing. Not everybody is asking the same kinds of questions, so this enables us to uh, make everything uniform. But I think the main takeaway message for this was ADHD. And when we launched the study, this was something that was almost never described for this uh, condition, DDX3X. And now it is. It impacts families, it impacts individuals, but to a very high degree. Anxiety, this is something we will also come back to. I think that overall, uh, we need to listen to families, listen to individuals, listen to our patients. And what's the next step? Well, we've talked about uh, motor tests, psychological tests. We've got a lot of figures uh, here. Uh, the Vineland study, I don't know if I can. I have a laser to point. Great. So we can see that overall uh, the psychological and movement uh, tests uh, which enables us to kind of set figures and see where a child is at. One of the strong points of that is verbal comprehension. We can see uh, that in those tests on the Vineland uh, grading or scale, we can see that verbal comprehension is something that's preserved well. So we need to base any learning on that. You know, speech therapists know about this and that's a useful thing for them to know uh, to then be able to uh, adapt their therapy and access to communication uh, oral and written how we get round any difficulties maybe with access to communication so this is all uh, a bulk of work that we've done on this data and we'll be talking about this in more detail or at least angela morgan will be Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having taken part in this, uh, in the question where, as we've seen, uh, it's, it's very important to know what the next steps are. And all of that is thanks to you. So thank you once again. Thank you very much.